Welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. If you are looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as the Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Also on Facebook and then on Ravelry. All of those will be linked directly down below if you want to follow along and see what I'm up to in between episodes. This podcast goes live every two weeks. <laughs> I realize I always forget to say that at the beginning, but if you like this podcast, do give it a thumbs up and you can also hit the subscribe button right down below. I have so much <laughs> to talk to you about, literally so much. I have three finished objects. I have four works in progress. I have a little bit of happy mail that is yarn related. I have a bump date for you. <laughs> and um, at the very end, we I am going to go over, it's kind of like a virtual baby shower almost because you all are so generous. Um, so I will put that at the very end in case you baby stuff is not your thing. <laughs> in case you're new around here, I am growing a human. This is week 20 seven but by the time you are watching this it will be week 28 which means i will be in my third trimester <sighs> i'm terrible <laughs> i'm not prepared for this but you might also notice that i'm in a different spot today i'm actually in the baby room i've always wanted to be like one of those cool people who had a rocking chair and like a totally cool corner spot to record in well i have one probably only for a couple of months <laughs> longer because the baby will be in here and I'll be back at the couch in the living room but this is a little bit out of the way um I won't have to fight with the robot vacuum or anything else so I'm very excited to be in this rocking chair this is the rocking chair and these are the maroon cushions that will be replaced with gray cushions I did order those about a month ago so probably another four to six weeks and the new cushions will be here for this fabulous fabulous rocking chair and I'm going to do my best not to move around like I normally do so that this doesn't bang into the wall and cause loud noises. What am I wearing? I felt like a little bit of orange today. This is my Lake of Nine shawl, which is a fingering weight two skein pattern. It has a three points like so. And these crosses right here this mesh pattern that is nine the roman numeral for nine and it is inspired by the video game god of war and there is a lake of nine in that video game and i would i should say god of war the most recent one because there are several video games like that um and yeah i you don't really see all three points when you're wearing this but one of the things that i like about this shawl is you can put one point i mean you can wear it however you want but you can put one point in front and then in the back the other two points keep the back of your neck warm. So they kind of bunch up and have a little extra bulk in the back and they hang down a little bit. And then I'm pulling it because it's September. It has definitely cooled off a little bit. It's been like 89 instead of 98. And it has been raining nonstop. And just in case you're worried, I am in St. Petersburg, Florida. We are nowhere near Hurricane Sally that is hitting the panhandle of Florida and Louisiana and things like that. Alabama. So that is not affecting us at all. It gave us a little bit of rain while it was on its way up the Gulf of Mexico, but no hurricanes in our forecast. We are completely safe. There has been tons and tons of rain, but I'm not in a flood zone. Well, we are in a flood zone. We're in flood zone D though. So we don't have to evacuate. There's no, there's nothing. It's totally fine. So we are all good. Now <clears throat> I do have some make-alongs to tell you about. I feel like it's been a little while since I've mentioned these and encouraged you to participate. And there are such amazing finished objects and works in progress in the threads on Ravelry. Now, if you are not a participant of Ravelry right now due to any reason, whether it's not accessible to you or you just prefer not to use Ravelry, totally fine. You can follow the hashtags on Instagram as well. So the first make-along is the Wizarding Mal 2020. That is a make-along that I am hosting with Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast, who is just a delightful human being but also how exciting that we're hosting this make along it has a different prompt for every single month and they are not all you can if you can fit your sock or your sewing project bag into the theme somehow for that month it counts um you also don't have to finish it during that month oh it just kicked the camera <laughs> this is real life 
I totally apologize. I'm not used to having the camera this close to my face. Um, <laughs> but that's just how the setup worked right now. I will try not to do that to make you give you motion sickness again. I'm so sorry. Um, so it basically has a wizardy or magic-y theme for each month. You can fit the yarn or the pattern or it inspired you somehow and it relates somehow or you worked on it while you were watching a wizarding movie. It doesn't matter. Any way that you can fit that into the make-along, you can make socks or project bags or both. It doesn't have to be one or the other or both. So totally you should participate in that because it's delightful. There will be prizes. And of all three make-alongs that I'm about to mention right now, the prizes for the third quarter will be drawn shortly. So it's, this is the last episode of September. The first episode in October, I don't know if I'll have prizes for the third quarter drawn by then, but definitely mid-October, I will have some prizes drawn. So there's the Wizarding Mile 2020. Then we have the Year of Classics 2020 which is a make-along for you and for me, because this is what I desperately need in my life, to make things that you will actually wear. <laughs> I know what we like to make is not always what we like to wear. I want to wear fingering weight, light, beautiful drape things. I want to make, I want to crochet and knit bulky and worsted weight things because they work up quickly. I will never wear them. So for me, the year of classics means I have to work on fingering weight garments and I have completed one. Um, that was the Angela cardigan that I showed off a few episodes ago. So anything that will fit in your actual wardrobe, it has to be a garment or a very large project somehow, like a huge shawl or something like that. It can't be a hat. So there's that. And then finally, there is the Mission Impossible Mal, which I'm really excited about. I have a project that I'm working on very slowly. It's my Skyrim cardigan. It has not been touched in two weeks and you'll see why. But that is my Mission Impossible project because it is a fingering weight knit faded sweater with so many techniques that I have never used in my life. So that is very slow going. I don't think it will be completed this year uh, at all, but I am working on it and this is for anything that challenges you have you never made a sweater have you and it can be any craft as long as fibers related somehow knitting spinning crochet weaving tatting embroidery uh cross stitch anything that really really challenges you put it in the wizard the wizarding mail the mission impossible mail and there will be prizes drawn for the third quarter of that as well and it's just informal we have a ravelry chatter thread directly in my group linked down below and there's no official finished object slash chatter thread. It's just all one thread because we all just want to support each other and be encouraging. And there are some truly amazing things that have been made. Truly. I am so inspired and I definitely don't want to go to work every day. <laughs> I would rather stay at home and make things. Okay. Shall we talk finished objects? Because I... I have three, three, two of them are really small. <laughs> There's no way I could have three big finished objects. The first one I will show you, it was living in this zebra bag that my friend Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast sent to me. And this is how much yarn I have left. This tiny little nug, I don't even, I think this is maybe like 10 grams. I haven't weighed it, but it weighs not very much. And the yarn, I had seven balls of this to begin with. It was donated by a lovely viewer of this podcast named Arlene. And she sent me seven of these balls. It is Red Heart with Love in the colorway Fruit Punch. And you get for this some amount of yards. <laughs> I'm so helpful. I have no idea how many yards because I can't find it on the label. Oh yes, 180 yards per 127 grams. So I had seven of these. These are all the ball bands. I really thought I was gonna run out of yarn at the end, but luckily I had just a little nug left. So what I made is this corner to corner blanket. So I love, I was making this into a baby blanket, not for anyone specifically. I think I'm actually going to keep it because it's huge and squishy and I don't know anyone who has this color palette, honestly, but it's, I like to make all of my baby blankets corner to corner generally because it is thick enough for you to actually put on the floor and put a baby on. Instead of just being a wrap blanket, it is sturdy enough. Usually I make them out of acrylic or Bernat blanket yarn. Um, it is sturdy enough to be dragged around by a child and to be, you know, 
and the corner to corner is dense but it has holes in it so i don't you of course <laughs> want to have some kind of holes or something like that you shouldn't give this to an itty bitty baby um at least not in their crib but if an, an older child gets this over their face it's not going to suffocate them there are holes where air and light can get through so i just started at one corner i went until i used three complete balls of yarn and then i started decreasing and used another three balls of yarn. <laughs> and then I had saved one ball for the border, which I just did a row of single crochet all the way around. And then I did three rows of half double crochet. And it's humongous. <laughs> I can't even barely get the whole thing in the screen. It's this wide, it's a giant square, and it looks like a rose garden. <laughs> That's what it looks like. I think, I mean, it's it's huge. It's way bigger than, a, this is more like a toddler size blanket than a baby blanket, I would think. Although I don't know the measurements for a toddler size blanket off the top of my head. I'm going to fold it so I can at least have this be manageable. This is one quarter of the blanket. One quarter portion of blanket. <laughs> so it's completely, completely done. Last time, I think I had a little bit left of decreasing and I still had to do the border. The border took forever, of course, because you're going around a whole blanket. And I threw this in the washing machine because it's 100% acrylic. It, this stuff will be here after the apocalypse. <laughs> it's washable. It is much, much softer and much more drapey than it was. I threw it in the dryer. The only thing you want to be careful about with acrylic is you don't want to throw it in the dryer or any knit, I should say. Don't throw it in the dryer with towels, even if it's allowed to be dried because you will never get the fuzz off. You will never get the lint off of the blanket. So I just dried it with regular things. I think even as it gets washed, which I'm sure it will get washed a lot, the more it gets used, the more it will get washed, it will get softer and softer and softer. So that is finished object number one. I'm calling it the fruit punch blanket <laughs> because that is the colorway. You can see the corner to corner stitches. I don't have a tutorial. I know someone always asks me <laughs> if I have a tutorial for the corner to corner blanket. I don't, but there are so many wonderful tutorials on how to do the corner to corner stitch. Just go on YouTube and type it in. Um, my, I know Mikey from the Crochet Crowd has some, and it's so easy, and I just love doing baby blankets out of corner to corner stitch. So, finish object number one. This is seven skeins of yarn, seven balls of yarn out of my stash, which I'm very excited about, into a useful project that will be used by this baby. <laughs> and even if it's not for a little while, it will definitely be used while they're a toddler because it has hot pink in it, hot pink. So yeah, very excited about that. And I'm gonna put it right here next to my rocking chair because I have a basket down there that used to be my old work in progress basket that was next to the couch. My husband is a woodworker. He actually built me a box with a lid to put my works in progress in. So I saved this basket and he was like, what do you need that for? This was like a year and a half ago. I was like, I don't know, just gonna keep it. So I kept it in the closet and now I decided it's a perfect little basket. It's blue canvas um, to hold baby blankets for this baby. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that's finished object number one. Finished object number two, and three are still wet. So I'm going to show them to you carefully. The first one was living in, this is a Tanny and Casey project bag that was a lovely gift from a viewer. And look at the sheep pen that I have on it. I adore this sheep guy. I love him so much. I love to use this bag. It's just like a little, it's almost like a little makeup bag, but I find that when I knit a hat, which I did, this is my favorite bag to use. It fits one skein of yarn perfectly. It is the perfect length to put needles in and I have everything in here. So I knit this hat on my, I have a Chowgu 4.5 millimeter circular. This is a fixed circular. I also have Chowgu 4.5 millimeter DPNs. And in here I also have a tape measure and my stoppers that go on the end of my knitting needles and a stitch marker. So this is how much yarn I had left. I've actually knit this hat twice. <laughs> now, this yarn was a lovely gift from a person, a viewer of this podcast named Caitlin, who is Wildwood Designs on Instagram. And she sent this skein of yarn to me as part of the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. Uh, it might have been, I think it was last year, 2019. 2019, yes. <laughs> last year was 2019. So she sent this to me and 
I, it's like a plump, it's at least an Aran weight yarn. I did a wraps per inch kind of thing. Um, and I think it's an Aran weight yarn. It's very, very plump though. It's, it's definitely, I know it has alpaca in it. I'm not sure what the exact content of this is. I think it's a wool alpaca blend. I have actually knit this hat twice because the first time I ran out of yarn because I didn't know how many yards there were. It was actually the first skein of yarn that she ever hand dyed. And I was so happy for it to come to live with me, but of course it's very thick and I wasn't sure what I was going to make with it. Was I going to make mittens sometime? I know I couldn't wear it as a scarf or hat because it's a little bit too rustic for me. And especially while pregnant, oh my God, my skin is so sensitive, so sensitive to everything. So I have a coworker though, who is moving to a very cold place, Wisconsin. It gets negative really cold, <laughs> really, really cold for a really long time. She's moving there. And so we're having a little going away party for her. And I'm like 99% sure she's not going to watch this before I give this to her or even at all. So I wanted to make her something that she could take with her. And I immediately thought of this yarn because A, it's thick and plump and squishy, B, super warm. And I know that she does, she'll be able to wear it because she is getting wool socks and things and doesn't have a sensitivity to those. So this is the hat. This is how my blocking mats are like these one foot by one foot tiles that you can, I got them on Amazon. I think I got three sets for eight bucks each and I have a ton of these. <laughs> They're like kids play mat and you can't really see, but if you were in person and you looked closely, you would see this is covered in straight pin holes because of how many things I blocked on it. So this is laying flat. It is still wet, <laughs> but this is the hat. So what I did is uh, this is all knit in one size needle. And because I started, <laughs> the reason it's knit on one size needle is I have a 4.5 millimeter fixed circular and a five millimeter fixed circular, but I do not have five millimeter DPNs. So there's no way I could close the hat. So I started on a 4.5, I should have started, I don't even know what's happening, but I should have done it differently, but I think it will be fine. The ribbing is still super stretchy. So initially, what the way that I like to knit my hats is I work three or four inches of two by two ribbing so you can fold it and have it doubled and then work until the hat's like eight, nine inches long and then do the decreases. So I did that, but then I ran out of yarn when I was halfway through the decreases. So I just stopped, normally in decreasing, you decrease one row, knit a row decrease one, knit one, all the way to the top. That gives it this nice, perfect shape. Well, <laughs> I was running out of yarn, so I just started decreasing every round. The hat looked so ridiculous. <laughs> you would not even believe how ridiculous this hat looked. I should have taken a photo. I didn't, I just ripped it out immediately. And so there used to be, it looked like there was this much ribbing, this much hat, and this much decreases. That's why it looks so weird. So I ripped it back to, two inches of ribbing instead of, I think I had done like three and a half. I picked up all the stitches because this is a wool or alpaca or wool alpaca blend, all the stitches just stayed. So I didn't pick them up and then rip it out. I literally ripped it out and then picked them up all around. Didn't drop a single one. I did have them oriented on the needle incorrectly, like at least half of the stitches. <laughs> I had them oriented. So I had to reorient them before I could knit them. But I picked them all up and then I just knit until I think it was about eight inches ish. And then I did the decreases. I was, I left myself about 25 grams to do the decreases, which was a little bit too much. But originally I had started the decreases with 18, 19 grams, and that was not enough. So I will, I'm, it's okay. I'm happy that there's a little tiny bit left over instead of that. So it is still wet. So I'm not really gonna mess with it too much. It's gonna be slouchy. And I think her head is smaller than mine. So it should be super warm and she can actually pull it like all the way down if she wants, which I'm not going to mess with that too much until it's completely dry. Smush that ribbing back together. So yes, this is the hat. The yarn is gorgeous. And I'm just really happy, first of all, that you entrusted me, Caitlin, with your first ever hand dyed skein of all time. and that you entrusted me to keep it in my stash until the perfect project came along. And then also it's gonna be so special because it's going to someone who I like very, very much, who has been a big part of my life in the last year. And she's going to somewhere where she will use this <laughs> so much. So this yarn has traveled far and wide, 
but it finally has grown up into what it was meant to be, which is a knitted hat. And look at those beautiful stitches. I'm not bragging. I'm saying the yarn is so plump that those stitches are amazing. And you can even see like a slight halo on it. Mm, delightful. So that's the hat. Very excited to have that done. This hat is the reason that I did not work on my Skyrim cardigan. I can't. I just can't knit on like a ton of projects at a time. I like to have one, maybe two knitting things going on at once. If you hear something in the background, it is because the robot vacuum that I have is right outside the door and I have the door closed, but he wants in. His name is Reginald and he wants to come in this room and clean the floor, but he cannot because I, you would not believe the amount of stuff I have all over the place. So that is finished object number one. No, number two, number two. I'm gonna put it on the floor over there so it will keep drying and we will be ready to go on to finished object number three this is the last one and it is living in on Erin Lane galaxy bag which was a gift from my lovely lovely friend and patron Emmy and it also has llama pins on it I show these off every time I talk about this bag because my husband got them for me <laughs> it says llama no drama it has cool llama I love him he's the best so living in here last time was the baby Yoda sweater that I showed. So this time is actually a baby Yoda hat that is finished. It is also still dry. So let me show you the yarn. I have this much yarn left. This was this yarn. <laughs> this is like a whole gift project that is just so cool. Ooh, I should like figure out how to attach these to a headband and then I can be Princess Leia. This is the most perfect Yoda yarn of all time because look at the green. It is Knightsbridge classic traditions in Bishop's Green. It is 65% baby llama, 25% merino, and 10% silk. You probably, it's probably not going to focus, <laughs> but you get I have 50 grams, 120 yards per ball. So she sent me five of these balls. I used two and a half balls to make the baby Yoda sweater. There was like a little wrap cardigan that was called the baby kimono. Again, do a Google search for baby wrap cardigans. This pattern, don't, don't waste your time buying it. You can find a better one. Then I used one and a bit <laughs> to make a Yoda hat to go with it. And this is the hat pattern that I used. It is a baby Yoda crochet hat pattern. It is a pattern by Made by Marnie. It is a free pattern. If you Google Baby Yoda hat pattern made by Marnie, this is what will pop up. It's completely free. It's super easy. Now, um, I did a couple of things because this is a DK weight yarn and the pattern calls for worsted. So I modified the pattern slightly for the hat and then I modified the ears, which is definitely gonna bite me in the butt. <laughs> this is ooh, also not dry. So, this is the hat. I added some more, I added like one, I added one increase round and then I added some extra rounds to make the length that I wanted before doing these little tassels. Let me turn this over because that's the back of the hat. So this is the front and then you have these little ear flaps that you do and then you have these little tassels. And one of the things I really liked about this pattern is these tassels. So you're just going doing single crochet all the way around. When you get here, you chain all the way down and then you single crochet back up into the chain and keep going. That makes for a really fabulous tassel instead of having to weave in an end on a chain. I love it. If I had thought of that before when I was making the actual wrap cardigan itself, I would have done the ties that way too, instead of just having a long chain. So the ears, because my gauge was off and I was, I held the yarn double to make the ears. These definitely look like Yoda ears for sure. However, this is the problem. <laughs> it's definitely going to be a photo op hat because the ears are too heavy <laughs> because I held the yarn double. Now, if this was worsted weight yarn and it wasn't baby alpaca yarn, I don't think that they would be too heavy. I may try to like put a pipe cleaner in them or something to like make them stay, but I don't know how to, <laughs> like when, when this is on a baby's head, it might look fine. I feel like this is gonna be more like a photo op hat than an actual hat. 
and she'll probably yank it off anyways. But the ears are just too heavy <laughs> because I made them holding it double, which is fine. Like, I'm totally fine with this being a photo op hat instead of a wear all the time hat. And even if I did these single ears, they wouldn't have been too heavy, but they would have been just as floppy because this yarn is not made <laughs> for amigurumi stitches. So you can see, this is the Baby Yoda ear. Yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna kind of be like that when the baby's wearing it, which honestly isn't terrible, but I think eventually it's gonna be like that. <laughs> maybe it won't, maybe this baby will have a really round head. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I find that it's very cute. It smells so delightful. <laughs> I love the smell of like soak and wool, like wool wash and wool, although this is llama and fanciness, baby llama yarn, but it still has that wooly smell to it. I just love it. So this one's the buy my Yoda hat. <laughs> and yeah, I'm excited to have used that yarn because it's just, delight it's just delightful. That is finished object number three. We have works in progress though. Yes, we do. So the first, I'm just gonna lean over and get all of them <laughs> because I don't have a table or anything in here. This was not good forethought, was it? No. So the first work in progress is this cowl. That is a cowl design that I am working on. The yarn is rolled up inside of it. <laughs> this is Voltage and Electric Blue. It's colorways by Yarn on the Prairie. And this is a design that I'm working on. It is a tubular cowl, but it's not one that you pull over your head. It's actually one that's gonna be worn like this. I am more than halfway done. This is where I was last time. And now I have done like an inch, inch and a half. That is because the puzzle from Heck <laughs> at work is finally done. If I remember, I'll put a little video clip showing that it is officially done. So that means I can go back to crocheting on my lunch break. So now this is going to be the project. It has been the project I've been taking to work the entire time. I just haven't had <laughs> the ability to work on it because I've been trying to finish that puzzle. So I finally finished the puzzle and now I am back to working on this. I also have, I typically can't knit or crochet while I'm at work because that's just not allowed really, but I have a class that I have to take on Friday and it's gonna be a couple of hours and I think that I will be able to get some progress on this done. So that is one work in progress. It's had a little bit of progress. The second one is I really wanted to have the body of this done and I'm so close, but I just couldn't pull it off. It's the baby Gramps. Gramps is a sweater pattern by Tin Can Knits. It is a paid for pattern, highly recommend. I made my, it goes from um, baby all the way to 4XL sizes. This is the baby. <laughs> I made my husband one last year that he had asked for. And so I am making a matching one for this baby using the exact same yarn that I used for his, which is this classic navy and gray. It's Valley Yarns Superwash DK. And this is how far I got. If I didn't have to knit that hat twice, <laughs> this the body of this would have been done because I'm so close. Like, I'm actually on the ribbing. I need about a third of an inch longer before I can do the bind off. So maybe like four, four more rows, three or four more rows and then the bind off. This is where I was last time, where the stitch marker is. So I knit all of that and this. I was like, my goal was to finish that Baby Yoda hat, to finish the corner to corner blanket and to finish the body on this sweater. But, oh well. <laughs> I got really, really close to finishing the body on the sweater. So. You can see I have like a little reindeer stitch marker. That's because it's a Christmas baby. Even though this sweater is gonna be like a six month size probably. <laughs> so I have to finish that. And then 
I will be picking up the sleeves to do those. I'm probably gonna have to do the magic loop, which is going to drive me bonkers, but luckily they're baby sleeves, so they won't take very long. I have them right now on like little shorty cables, but I don't, I don't think there's enough stitches. And as soon as I start decreasing, there definitely will not be enough stitches. So once, so my goal for the next podcast is to have the body of this done in one sleeve. Then I'll do the second sleeve. And then of course I still have to pick up and do the shawl collar, which has short rows in ribbing and all kinds of stuff, which I'm going to have to look up again. I know I did it for my husband's cardigan, but I don't remember how. I don't remember how I did it. So I will have to do some YouTubing. That is what I do when I don't know how to do something. I do some Googling. That is work in progress number two. Are you tired of baby makes yet? Don't be because there's one more. <laughs> the next baby make that I have is half of a cardigan. Yes, half. It's living in my feminist knit club bag, which is one of the very few purchases I have made this year from Nerd Bird Makery. Um, so delighted to have this bag. It's such a sturdy, quality, delightful, fantastic bag. I've been wanting one for so long. Now I have to find the start of this pattern. <laughs> this is the Kinsey Kimono by Lakeside Loops. This is a pattern that I have had in my library for quite a long time, like probably two years, and I've debated making it for myself on and off, but it uses worsted weight yarn and I didn't really want to do the math to transfer it into a lighter weight of yarn for myself, but I'm going to make it for a baby. So I have four balls of this Yarn Lane Capri yarn, which is by Loops and Threads. It's 50 grams each, so I have 200 grams. It is a really interesting fiber blend. You get 87 yards for 50 grams and it is 57% cotton, 28% nylon, and 15% polyester. So, I love this yarn. <laughs> I have used almost two balls of it. I have this much left of the second ball, which it looks like there might actually be some yarn here, but really it's not, it's mostly air. It's just the inside squishy part of the yarn. This yarn is like stretchy. So look how much that stretches. It's it's such a unique yarn. If it wasn't like a worsted weight yarn, I would want to make myself a cardigan out of this. This is half a cardigan. Now this also got frogged. <laughs> I, the pattern I got really confused and it's because of, I was working on this after 9 p.m., which I've been going to bed at 9 p.m. because <laughs> I'm so tired. But I was like, you know what? I don't have to get up. I had a day off. It was Labor Day. I was like, I don't have to get up in the morning. I'm going to stay up till 10 and I'm going to work on this and I'm going to get all the way through this section. So the pattern said, if you're making extra small, go to row 12. Well, I read that as work from here until row 12 and then see what happens. What that pattern actually meant was skip to row 12. Don't complete any rows. Just go straight to row 12. I didn't realize until I got to row 12. Like I literally had to rip out like this much, probably all of this. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I debated not ripping it out at all, but I really wanted it to have this aesthetic and look how it was supposed to. So I frogged it back to literally here. <laughs> I ripped out like this much, an entire like 50 grams, pretty much of yarn. And <laughs> I don't know, like, I think I just misunderstood the pattern. <laughs> so you work it, you start with a chain and then you work back and forth and then you work the sleeve. So that's the sleeve cap. So basically I'm working two halves of this cardigan. So this is one half. I will work another panel exactly the same and then they will be seamed to a certain point to be a little cardigan. And then you'll seam the sides of course. The sleeves are one row less than called for in the pattern. I just liked the way that they looked. The one other modification that I made is that the sleeve on one side in the pattern is slightly longer. I don't know how to explain this exactly. So you work and then you work the sleeve and then you go back the other direction, which means this part of the cardigan has one extra row of double crochet than this part. And you can see there's like a little weird thing happening here because I went and added the rest of the row of double crochet. 
because I really just wanted this to match perfectly. In the pattern, you have to stretch one side out to match the other, and I was just like, why? Like, why do that? So I just added one extra row of double crochet. So this half, it's so cute, and it's pink. I don't want everything the baby owns to be pink, but I would like her to have some girly things. So far, everything has been like um, gender neutral or um, blue or things like that, which is totally fine. Um, I have a friend who gave me a giant bag of her baby clothes that her baby has outgrown and they're all, she has a boy. So <laughs> this baby will be outfitted in probably a lot of boys clothes because I will wash them all and keep them all and you know, I need baby clothes. So that's totally fine, but I would like her to have some pink things. This is of course huge. <laughs> this is a toddler sized. Like she's gonna have to be at least a year and a half old and like walking before this works. But it's just, it worked up really quickly. I love the way it looks. And I love the way this yarn is. So you can see my long tail that I left for seaming. So yeah, that's half of a Kinsey kimono baby cardigan. <laughs> I will report back when <laughs> the second half has been completed and it actually looks like more than half a cardigan. So the last work in progress is something Oh, that is all tangled. It is yarn that I've had in my stash for quite a while. I have two balls of this and two balls of this yarn in like a dark blue. I just thought it would really, really shine in this particular color uh, because I am slightly obsessed with velvet. I have been since I was a kid. I had a velvet dress that I wore until I got so tall that it was like basically a shirt and I had to wear pants with it. <laughs> so I've had a couple of velvet dresses in my life. I absolutely love them. It is way too hot to wear them in Florida. But when they came out with Brunette Velvet yarn a while ago, I bought some because I was obsessed with it. I've tried to work this into several different projects, but you really have to be conscious of the kind of project. Like, I really don't think this is a good garment yarn. It's not gonna hold its shape. It's just not. It has no spring or boing or anything like that. This is 100% polyester, I think, yes. You get 10.5 ounces or 300 grams, 315 yards. This is the colorway Soft Softened Blue. And what I am making is a blanket design. I know, shocking. This is the first thing that I am trying to design that is not wearable. But I just thought that it needed to be this. I am loving it. I have actually already graded it, the pattern, from sizes preemie all the way through a king size blanket. <clears throat> the pattern itself is not written up, but I know stitch counts and gauge for all of those sizes of blanket. And what I am doing, because it's a two row pattern repeat, is I am pretty much just working like one or two pattern repeats a night. I try to switch between knitting and crochet, even if I'm sitting on the couch, I'll do like one row here and one row back on this, and then I'll knit for a little bit and then I'll switch. Especially when I'm knitting, I find that it cramps my hands a little bit, so I like to switch back and forth between crochet. So the texture is delightful, the drape, delightful. And I'm thinking about calling this the cozy up blanket, <laughs> which, I th there probably is a blanket named that already, honestly, but it's the Cozy Cottage Crochet, and this is a, such a cozy blanket, and every time I pull it out, my husband's like, ooh, because <laughs> he loves to feel it because it's delightful. It's so soft. So that will probably be a longer term whip because I'm just working on it on and off, and of course, it is a blanket, so it will take more time. <coughs> ooh, my throat is getting scratchy. Now, I have a little bit of Happy Mail to share with you. That is all the things I have been working on. I got a package in the mail <laughs> and it is baby related. So it's kind of part of the bump date, um, but it's also, how do I say? It's also yarn related. So I'm going to talk about it first. And in here, it's just such fun things. So the person who sent me this, her name is Elizabeth. And she said that she had a lava bag to send me. And I was like, wow, well, I can't turn out a lava bag, can I? So she sent me a whole package worth of stuff. And I 
I have actually seen this fabric before. I actually have some of this fabric to make that I made some bags out of. It's a Hobby Lobby fabric, and I love that it has pink on the inside, but I've, I've never owned in my life a bag like this. This is one of these bags that opens. It has like this big plastic grommet, and you just feed this through, and then the top part is open so you can feed your yarn out and work on your project. I am so excited to have a bag like this. I think this would be so useful, especially as something I can throw into the diaper bag and keep a project in. Inside the llama bag, she's put this Hello Baby collection knit kit, which is by, it has the, it's by Appalachian Baby Design. It is the Hello, no, the Hill and Holler hat. So that is a cute, cute little baby hat. And in here is this beautiful little, the yarn that you need to make it. It's cotton, cream, and pink yarn. This is a knit hat and I like, it has like a little loop on top. So I definitely think I'm gonna make this. It's so cute. And it already is in a project bag. So I think I should make it. <laughs> also, there was a bear. <laughs> this is a beanie bear, a beanie baby bear. He has beans in his butt. <laughs> So he sits up and I just love him. I really, really like this bear. The bear is called Princess, which she will be. <laughs> there is also a really, really sweet card, a teether that you can like put in the freezer and then they can chomp all over it for when they're teething. And of course drool on everything. There is also a Karen latte cake and some confetti on top <laughs> in the colorway cream. I was thinking about making like, I don't think it's quite enough for a blanket blanket, but like a lovey or something out of this. It is so soft, so soft. Maybe I'll make like a little, like a car seat blanket or something like that. I don't know. I just really, really can't stop touching this because it's so soft. And then finally, this little guy, <laughs> which my husband thinks is the coolest and I think is the coolest too. I'm kind of obsessed with it. It's an Amigurumi rattle. It is a donkey. Look at his face. And it's a handmade by a company called Pebble. And what is interesting about this company is it says buying this toy provides communities in Bangladesh with rural employment that is fairly played, fairly paid, flexible and local and um, it's fair trade, all of that. And it is a donkey rattle. So, I mean, how cute. I'm really obsessed with this. <laughs> I really, 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 really like him. I think he's going to be a toy in the diaper bag. Like this is gonna be a toy that gets carried around everywhere. I just, <laughs> look at his face. I just love him. <laughs> And I love that he makes noise. I probably won't love it, you know, eventually when it makes noise. Because babies love things that make noise and they drive their parents crazy. But for now, I love that it makes noise. It's so delightful. <laughs> and thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh, I just kicked the camera again. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to share with you is I got contacted by a company called Molly Ollie quite a few months ago and they asked if I would be interested in reviewing a diaper caddy and I was like well I'm pregnant but I'm not having the baby till December so if you don't mind me filling it full of yarn stuff and you want to send it now like I'd be happy to review it but <laughs> I'm not gonna have the baby till December so I don't know like it's up to you so they were like okay we'll just wait a little bit and send it to you so it actually arrived this is the caddy it's very very thick felt and I really like it. Like I was expecting to like it based on everything that I read about them. And I'm gonna leave a link directly to their store down below, but I really like it. It's super sturdy. You could fit this. I think I'm gonna put a bunch of diaper stuff in it. It has a pocket on this side that has all of these little things. I think this would be fantastic for crochet. Put your crochet hooks in there. There's another pocket here. There is three pockets on the back, a big old pocket on the side, and then on the front, three more pockets. So tons of stuff to hold. And then on the inside, ooh, I'm making a mess of this. There are these removable dividers. So these actually Velcro in and you don't have to have them divided if you want. You could just have one big basket.
basket. Um, it's full of baby stuff <laughs> at the moment, which I will show you in a minute. But I really like it. Like I just took it out of the package a couple of days ago. So I can't speak to everything about it yet. But I just, I don't know, it's super sturdy. It's this big. And I just think that I, if I weren't going to be using this for baby stuff, I definitely would put what I would actually do. <laughs> this is what I would do. I would put different projects in each of the cubbies. Like I would have either one and one or one, two and three, depending on how small they were. Because I like to switch back and forth between projects when I'm on the couch. And I would just tuck one in, knit for a little while on it, put it back in, crochet for a little while. Nothing would get tangled. Nothing would get separated. Yeah, I think it's fabulous. It's really well constructed. It's really well made. It didn't smell at all when I took it out of the package. Super thick, sturdy felt. So, so far, I highly recommend. It will not be having yarn things in it because it will be having baby things. <laughs> this will probably be the diaper or caddy that I use for the actual baby. <laughs> That is my plan anyways. So let's, I'm not exactly sure how to do this. <laughs> We're gonna have a bump date. I'm going to pick up the camera and move it back a little bit so I have a little bit more room. Here is your bump date. This is the bump. It's getting pretty big. <laughs> this is a six month bump. It's almost start of a seven month bump, almost the start of a third trimester bump. I. I'm still feeling like garbage, honestly. It's super annoying, but she's kicking me so much, like constantly I feel her kicking me, which is delightful. It's my favorite thing about being pregnant is feeling her inside. Although I will be very happy to have her outside of my body. So what this bump date is going to be pretty much is kind of like a virtual baby shower. I was just, overwhelmed completely and blown away by what all of you did and all of the things that arrived on my door. Now, I do want to say very specifically and clearly, I, the Target baby registry that I have, it doesn't tell me, like it tells me when someone buys something, but it doesn't tell me any of your contact information whatsoever. It doesn't tell me your email address, your home address, your phone number, nothing that you put in where I would be able to contact you, which actually is really like anxiety inducing for me because I want to write you a thank you note, <laughs> but I can't because I don't have any of your information. So if you sent something, um, it probably has arrived. I probably will show it right now. And I want to say a huge virtual thank you. Consider this like a giant public thank you card. I'm just, all I got is in the box would be a little note that would have the note that you wrote if you wrote a note with like either a name that you put first name or first and last name. I'm not gonna say any last names. I wanna protect everyone's privacy, but I'm going to say thank you the best that I can. <laughs> I've written down where everything came from. I just don't have any contact information to get back to you and be like, thank you so much, something arrived because it didn't come with any and it won't tell me who did what it will just tell me like what shows up so in no particular order <laughs> i'm going to show you some things that have showed up on my doorstep and i and my husband i've just been truly blown away so in here in this basket of things there was one book that showed up that had no note, no contact information, no name, nothing. So I don't know who this came from. It's the belly button book, uh, which is super cute. It's a board book. Um, so I don't know who sent me this. If you sent me the belly button book, thank you so much. <laughs> it arrived and it I'm sure will be used very much by this baby. So let's see here. What I have in my lap. That's where we're going to start. <laughs> so all of these things came from a lovely viewer named Susan, everything that was in the Mali Ali Caddy. I haven't opened hardly anything yet because I was kind of waiting to show you. And I really, really felt like awful last week, like, truly. So I feel a little bit better this week. I haven't had much energy to do things, but all of these little things came together. There is a nail clipper set because babies have really sharp nails and they scratch their faces all the time and you. So we gotta get those nails trimmed. There's a little like three, three hole plate. <laughs> what am I trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say, like a little dinner plate. Along with some spoons. Everybody needs baby spoons for when they start eating baby food. 
and also a little like a little sippy cup in purple she also sent two pacifiers and then a duck this i'm actually going to take out of the package and show you because there's a sticker right on top of him my husband likes this guy too it's a bath ducky because we definitely are going to sing rubber ducky you're the one you make bath time so much fun <laughs> yes rubber ducky so those all came from susan so thank you very much susan that was so kind of you then another whole little pile of things came from a lovely person named veronica and i'm just going to lean over oof this belly is getting in the way of me leaning over seriously so all of these came from veronica because veronica must love books because <laughs> she sent me multiple books there's one called the going to bed book yes all babies need to go to bed and so do adults the very hungry caterpillar which is one of my favorite books of all time and one fish two fish red fish blue fish dr seuss book i can't wait to read to this baby <laughs> i'm so excited and then two wooden puzzles. So there is a number puzzle and a color. So this is wood. I haven't taken them out of the package, of course, <laughs> but there's that one. And then an alphabet wooden puzzle as well. Like what a wonderful thing to work on fine motor skills while learning. So thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Then there was, if I can reach it, uh, I can barely reach it. <laughs> a changing table pad <laughs> and cover. So I'm gonna put the changing table pad down cause it's big and I'm going to cause an accident with the camera. The changing table pad and the cover for it, which is washable, thank God, <laughs> is, this is really, really, really pretty. You can see it's like really soft on one side and has these little gray arrows on the other side, which will totally match the dresser cause it's gray. So I have a place to change the baby's diapers. That is from Stephanie, who is the tatted tatter. Thank you, Stephanie. And she sent me the funniest message. The funniest message that came with it was like, you're gonna need a lot of these. <laughs> yes, I know there will be about a billion diapers changed on this thing that made me laugh a lot. So thank you. Also, let's see if I can pull this up. Oh. This came from Victoria. It's a baby bassinet. It's a little tiny baby bassinet. It's supposed to be portable and like you sleep in your bed with it or you take it places. I'm gonna tell you this is our bassinet and I'll tell you why I wanted it. Because the space next to our bed, the, our bed in our room, it's just a bed in a room. Like it's really small. So the space next to my bed is probably this wide. Like I can get out of bed and go to the bathroom. <laughs> there is no room. There's no room for a bassinet. There's no room to move the bed over and have more room on the other side. There's just not. So what I'm planning on doing is taking, we have a piano bench and we have like a little stool. So whichever one of those these fits on will be next to the bed because it's only about this wide. And then this will go on top of it. So I can still just reach over and get the baby and the baby will be contained and there will be no danger of falling because it will be wedged in between the wall and the bed. But there's no room for us to have a real bassinet or anything like that. But I still wanted to have the baby close to me, especially at the beginning. So this is what we decided on and I am so thrilled. Like this is a place for the baby to sleep as soon as it is born. I'm excited to take it out of the box and open it and look at it and just be so excited. She also sent something else that I will have to show you later. Um, let me um, get this. What came? There is, this is from Patty, the Good Night Moon book, which is another very favorite book of mine. Like Dr. Seuss books, Good Night Moon, Very Hungry Caterpillar, Harold and the Purple Crayon. What a great book. So this is from Patty. Also, she sent a bunny sheet. So I will put this on the in the crib 
This is the first sheet that we have gotten for our crib and some beautiful baby blankets, muslin baby blankets. You can never have too many of these. They can swaddle, they can be, they literally serve every single purpose in the world. So Patty, so delighted. Thank you so much. Then let's see here. This, these two items came from a beautiful person named Leticia who sent a mattress pad. So this is basically a waterproof stain repellent mattress pad <laughs> to put on top of the mattress, to put under the sheet. So, you know, when the baby like has a blowout, which it will, <laughs> or pees out of its diaper or throws up somewhere, this can go in the wash and the mattress will be fine. Very excited to have this. So this and the bunny sheet will be going on the mattress very shortly. I'm just gonna wash them first and then the whole crib will be put together. And she also sent a ring sling, which I'm really, really excited. I am planning on being a baby wearer, 100%. <laughs> so I see, oh, of course it's taped shut. So I won't really be able to show you right now, but you can see kind of that's the color. It's gray. And I picked gray because gray is like, goes with everything. And I just, I think I'm going to be wearing the baby constantly, honestly, especially because I really don't have much maternity leave. Um, I will have at max four weeks. Only two of those are going to be paid. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to go back to work pretty quickly, but luckily I'm working something out where I can either work from home for a little bit or bring the baby with me for a little bit. So I will be, the baby will be attached. <laughs> so the ring sling, I'm really, really appreciative of because it will allow me to type and have hands free and, you know, just have the baby right here, which is very, very delightful. Then there's a whole box of little things from Susan. There is a formula dispenser. I'm gonna to try to nurse, but you know, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? A sippy cup in pink, yes. Also these teethers, which are cactuses. <laughs> I love them. And some washcloths, which I will also open and take out of the package. There is an elephant one and some green ones. So baby washcloths. So thank you, Susan. That's so, so nice of you. I love them very much. Now, I have to think about how I can do this. <laughs> so, um, let's see. I'm gonna have to turn the camera like this, and then I am going to run around and come over here. <laughs> I'm gonna move this light so that, ah, uh, yes, you can see. And look at, now you can really see the bump. <laughs> so hopefully you can still hear me because I have a couple more things to show you and I cannot drag them over to the corner. One is, this also came from Victoria. It is a boppy newborn pillow. So this is a, first of all, I don't know if I can get this over. It's got little animals on it. It's basically a pillow that you prop up a baby on when they cannot prop up themselves so they can still see what's going on and like be part of the team and part of the crew without being on their back all the time. So oh, this is so useful. Then there's also from Victoria. Actually, this is the Boppy Newborn Lounger. This is the pillow that you prop babies up. So Victoria got the pillow that props babies up. This is the Boppy Nursing Pillow, which is a separate thing, which I am equally excited about because it takes, if you've ever held a baby for a long time while it's, while you're feeding it or trying to, I mean, I've never nursed a baby, but like with a bottle or just while it's sleeping, it will like give you a dead arm so fast. This is a pillow that will actually support the baby with and let you have access to your arm. So that's super exciting. And this also came from Victoria, which is little pink onesies. 
little pink onesies. It's the first girly stuff <laughs> that I have for her. Also, I can't show it to you because it's buried, but it is like really, oh, maybe I can pull it up. This <laughs> is a crib mattress that came from Lynn and Samantha and Alex, who are a whole family. And they sent a crib mattress, which I didn't even know what to do with when it showed up on my door. I like cried a lot, <laughs> which I'll talk about in a second. Also, this thing, which you can see, is a stroller. And I will, this is a stroller that came from Carol. And I will talk about that in a second. Because <laughs> that really was crazy to me. Turn it this way. <laughs> because there's just a couple more things I want to show you. So, two more things. This, oh, goodness, is a pack and play. Possibly one of the most useful inventions of all time for a child because you can <laughs> confine them. It's called baby jail, portable baby jail. So I am planning, this of course is, you can set it up, it's called a pack and play. You can set it up and take it down. So anywhere we take the baby where I need room, this will be helpful. And then this is from Sally. Oh, and it's a baby swing. Which I can always say everything is super useful, <laughs> but a rocking chair, a way to rock the baby, a way to rock the baby without you holding the baby, impossibly useful. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around and sit down without knocking everything over. Oh, I did it! Hopefully that didn't give you motion sickness or seasickness or anything else. I do apologize for the crazy shenanigans. I just didn't know how else to show you. Now, uh, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Like, thank you does not seem like enough. And for example, the crib mattress I was going to purchase after the crib, but of course we had an insurance debacle. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just postpone that until October and then save for it then and hope the baby doesn't come early. But Lynn and her family sent a crib mattress and then also the mattress pad and a sheet showed up for it. So once I wash the mattress pad and the sheet and put that on there, the baby crib will be completely done. Like no matter what happens, this baby could come early, it could come, it could come tomorrow, hopefully not, hopefully it stays in there and cooks, but the baby will have a place to sleep, a legitimate place to sleep, <laughs> not just like, you know, I don't know where I'm going with that, but that's like such a relief to me that the crib is complete, that we don't have to wait to get a crib mattress or anything like that. Also, the the pack and play like the bassinet the pack and play the sh the baby swing like these are things that i were kind of like luxury items to me almost like the bassinet we would have definitely had to buy um but like the baby swing i was hoping <laughs> that we would get one but you know i did not know if that would be the case i just put it on there and kind of was like yeah i hope we get a baby swing because I have been, I have babysat a lot of babies in my life and I know that that's not the same as having your own, but babies love swings. And when you go places, you need a place to confine a baby to baby jail, <laughs> like a pack and play. So it's just like, so, so useful. And then Carol sent the stroller, which I didn't, my husband was like, I think, you, I think we got a stroller. Like it showed up when I was at work and I was like, that's like, there's no way we got a stroller. What is work? What? Oh no, it's the actual stroller. And this stroller, I put it together on Sunday, had a little bit of energy. So it came in pieces, but it didn't require any tools to put together. It snapped together all perfectly. It literally one strap folds up. It's not too super heavy. And the car seat, which I know we're getting a car seat because my mom and my aunts have kind of gone in together to get that the car seat will clip into the stroller. That's one of the reasons we wanted this stroller in particular is because the car seat will clip into it until the baby outgrows the car seat, the infant car seat. And then this stroller will work until it 
we don't need a stroller anymore. And it's a jogging stroller. And my husband really loves to go for runs. He loves to go for bike rides. And I know he won't be able to do that immediately with the baby, but it turns on a dime. Like it's so easy to maneuver. It's so easy to navigate. I am so impressed with it, honestly. Like I thought I was hoping it would be good, but it's wonderful and it's so useful. And he also will be happy to use it, which is very helpful. And so I, like, I, I don't know what to say. I didn't, I would have never in a million years, in a million years imagined that I would be surrounded by all of these beautiful things for a baby that hasn't been born yet. And I also wanna say a very specific thank you to two people, um, one of whom sent a gift card and one of whom sent a regular card with an amount that will enable me to buy a very specific baby monitor. And the reason, the air kicked off. <laughs> now I'm really hot. I'm also getting really, really hot. My temperature is like all over the place because I'm pregnant. Ooh, I'm gonna try to get through this part. <laughs> I know we've kept you too long already, but I'm trying to get through this part without getting super emotional. One of the things I am most worried about is this baby not breathing. And the reason I'm worried is because I, when I was an infant, stopped breathing twice. And also had a brother, an older brother who I've never met because he stopped breathing and they were not able to revive him. So there's always been something in the back of my mind, like I will never sleep. I will never sleep if I'm just gonna be staring at the baby all night, like making sure it's breathing. I don't know how to do it. So I've gotten some recommendations from my doctor and from some other people and I kind of settled on a baby monitor, but it was a significant amount of money. So it measures oxygen levels on a baby and it sounds an alarm. Now, of course, you may, you still may not be able to do anything. I know that that's the case um, if the baby stops breathing, but we are planning to be certified, my husband and I, in infant CPR. I am actually already certified in infant CPR because I worked in a daycare a long, long time ago, but I definitely need a refresher. And it like, will at least give me the peace of mind to know that if oxygen levels drop for any reason, it will sound an alarm that will be super loud <laughs> to wake up the dead. And the baby will be right next to me in the bassinet or she'll be 15 feet from me in the crib across the hall and that I can at least run in and do something. And, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get through this. To, to know that I can get that is a bigger relief than I can properly even express to you. And it really means the world to me because I, I truly don't think I'll sleep ever again without it. Um, we probably would have found a way to get it somehow, but um, I can get it now. <laughs> I can go ahead and order it. And in case this baby comes early, I will have it already. And then not only that, but I'll have a bassinet for the baby to sleep in and I'll have a crib for the baby to sleep in if needed. There will be I have onesies to dress the baby in and pacifiers and teethers and books to read to her and <clears throat> toys for her to play with and things to feed her with and a thing to wear her with and a swing to put her in. I just can't, I just can't, <laughs> I can't even, I don't know what to say other than I am overwhelmed. <laughs> and blown away and more appreciative than I could possibly, possibly put into words for how supportive you are. And just know that you have given me a peace of mind, <laughs> not just with the baby monitor, although that is huge, but giving me a peace of mind that I did not have before and I feel very special. <laughs> I feel very loved and I <sighs> can't do this. Mm. <sighs> I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> it's all I can say is I'm just overwhelmed. 
and I wish I could write you all like a long letter thanking you, but I don't have your contact information because it won't give it to me. But I hope that you know how much I mean it when I say thank you and what a difference you are making, not just in my life, but in the life of a tiny person who has yet to even meet the world. I'm I'm so happy that she is so loved already. And I appreciate each of you so, so much. And I <clears throat> I keep feel like every episode I'm just crying now, but I really am blown away. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you very much. And I will definitely keep giving you bump dates. We'll have another three months. So what is that? Six-ish? Six to seven more bump dates before the baby will be here. Oh God, I'm not prepared. And she, I will bring her on the podcast. Don't you worry. She'll be a community baby because she already is. So I guess I have to stop because it's been longer than an hour. And all I'm going to do if I keep talking is just cry <laughs> because I'm so overwhelmed and so blessed and so thankful and so emotional. So just know you're make, you're, you have made a huge difference in my life. And I appreciate you. Time's infinity <sighs> and I have to stop now <laughs> I really have to not only because I'm crying but also because I don't feel good and I haven't all day and I got to eat something or uh, I'm the nausea is gonna get a thousand times worse than it already is so I'm just gonna have to hope that this message is coming across coherently and not like the rambly emotional crying mess that I feel like it is. So <laughs> I will be back in two weeks and hopefully I'll have some more progress to show you. And I hope that you are well. I hope that if you're in the path of anything, a hurricane, a storm of any kind, a storm emotionally, a storm in your life, any health issues, I hope that you have people who are supporting you and that you are able to take some time for yourself and to remember that you can search the world over for the source, but it's you. You're the one who has always been there for you and you can do this and you're worth it and you're valuable and you got to be kind to yourself because you are worth love. So until I see you again, happy crafting. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're working on. I am so curious and I, We'll see you again in two weeks. Bye friends. <laughs>